Once you do it, you feel that adrenaline rush and uh, you're on it till the end and, and you see it put to bed yeah. and do some of the mop up, the, the clean up and rehab. Uh, once you get a season of that, yeah, it's in your blood and it's, there's nothing else. While the rest of the country is flipping its lid over cybercrime, illegal aliens, and mutagenic fuel gases, the Pacific Northwest still spends its summer struggling with mankind's first and oldest enemy, fire. In the last decade, hundreds of thousands of forest fires have scorched 5.5 million acres of American land. The average Oregon summer sees 561 wildfires damage 16,000 acres of often pristine forest, causing mind-boggling damage and devastation. Last month, we traveled to Medford, Oregon to team up with a firefighting crew from Grayback Forestry. Their job is to amble right up to a roaring blaze and dig a line around it to choke the fire to death. When there isn't a fire going, they cut back and relax by walking up the side of a 45 degree cliff and clearing out old underbrush, which provides fuel for these fires. They are easily the hardest working people in tree business. Hey, it's Thomas. Um, it's five in the morning or something. We're in Oregon in a parking lot. We're about to go into the forest um, and tear down trees so that other trees don't catch fire. In the checkerboard. Forest Service, wilderness, white is private, and the yellow is, is BLSF. Today, the unit we're on now is in Rogue River, which is a 45 minute drive. It, uh, it changes every, every different unit. Usually every week or Every other week, they ain't got to grab oil and stuff for the chainsaws. Yeah. So. We've got to. Uh we got to pile into this uh, giant box on the back of a pickup that they call a crummy. I'm guessing for uh, good reason. It feels dumb. I mean, these guys get up every morning this hour, but I feel like physically shaken. I'm just not used to, uh, not used to five o'clock. It's probably a healthier way of doing things. All right, I guess we got to get in the truck right now. Uh, thank you. Uh, somewhere around 5.30, 5.45, oh, we'll load up the, uh, the trucks that we're taking out to the unit. Uh, get everything ready, make sure the tools are in there, make sure we got enough fuel and bar oil, and, you know. Uh, and we'll all head out about 6 o'clock, we leave the shop, and depending on how far, um, usually a half hour to an hour, it takes us to get to the unit. You really get to know the guys you work with, and, you know, everyone's about the same age and has the same interests. I mean, we're working outside, so everyone loves, you know, the hiking. If they're not into mountain biking, they're into, like, ATV riding or dirt biking, our own fishes, like camping. So it's easy to get along with everyone. Everyone's down to earth and has the same interests, so. Our oxygen tank is usually a handkerchief over us. <laughs> and if you're smart about it and the smoke's going at you, you just kind of step aside for a minute and let it pass as the wind shifts if you can. Um, it's kind of rough. Um, I, like I said, last year I didn't really have, it was my first season, I didn't really have a long period away, but it's like, yeah. you're gone, you miss your family, and your wife misses you and wants you home. We did a fire here in town, uh, in Roxanne was a mountain. Probably a two-day night shift is what I did, and then that was out. Before we come into something like this, we'll have a briefing, and uh, whoever is like the incident commander will kind of of the fire at the time will kind of tell us what to expect, what to look out for. We don't just like Tromping show up and just like yeah. start running at it There's with our tools. Fire. There's yeah. a fire. Let's put it out. Okay. They usually have a pretty good plan. They usually will do like the bucket drops with the helicopters, dropping water on them, dropping yeah. retardant on them uh, to slow it down when it gets there so you can work it. Uh, it's a real like, I don't know, kind of slimy, slick kind of uh, wet material that they'll drop and it gets everything red. So once the 
if the flame does get to it, it slows it down enough to let us work a little bit more yeah. in this area. So the final, once you get the line dug around it, you'll get the hose down there and you'll start, you just start the perimeter. Like we're here on the line and the fire was right here. If they had the water, it slows it down. We'll just start in 10 feet and we'll scrape everything hot back in. We'll spread the pieces out and extinguish the flames ourselves. That's like basically our job is to get what we can with the tools and make the fire go out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Things will grow back, and if you guys were here a few months earlier, this would have been green yeah. already, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Over time, over time, there'll be, there'll be some new trees. Yeah. So if you're allergic or not, okay, there's an epi kit on the dash of my truck with the hazmat. So if you get stung, let me know and I'll let you jack yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> So we basically just walked to the job site and we're all already beat. Um, this is a lot more vertical than I'm used to things being this early. Our camera guy pukes. Um, I'm actually kind of jealous of him because I've still got the full night's pizza just sitting on my stomach. Oh, the tree dust is playing hell with my sinuses. You see, yeah, just imagine a fire moving uphill. It gets into this brush and then you have your lower, you know, your smaller mid canopy and that just carries into the large trees. So what the cutters are doing is they're coming up below us here, working up the hill, and they're taking pretty much the smaller trees, keeping it to a spacing so they're not just clearing the forest. Maybe. Yeah. And we're trying to manually uh, recreate what, what a fire would do. Wow. This is the first time I've seen Shane kind of sit, and it's been like an hour and a half of just straight walking uphill with saw, destroying trees right and left. This is easy. I mean, we get higher up and it's like a lot of rocks. Yeah. And like the whole ground, you'll just take one step up and three steps down. Jeez. So okay. it's it's tough. I am uh, carrying my body weight in uh, forestry supplies, going down a 50 degree incline to uh, chop down some shrubs so forest fire doesn't destroy this. That happens a lot, even with us, dude. <laughs> What's slowly, that? Uh, slowly getting less enamored of this job. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for carrying them out here. Yep. I really feel kind of worthless compared to these guys, but like I know if I, uh, if I had like a chainsaw in hand, I'd just be like getting it caught in trees right and left, Sorry. having the blade just suck down into everything I touch. I'm gonna leave this for the uh, the real guy. Well, I've been doing this for roughly three years. Um, I started uh, back in 07, um, just moved up here. I had been teaching for a little while outside of Reno, and um, one day I realized that, you know, I wasn't there for the kids. I was there for a paycheck. Yeah. And I always told myself that if I found myself teaching in that kind of situation, that I have no business being there. I'd always wanted to get involved with firefighting, so came on out, thought I'd give it a shot. I do enjoy fighting fire, and I, I love being in, in doing that part of the job. However, you know, if we can mitigate them before it, it comes down to getting to a big point, then I think it's, we're better off that way. But you're with the same guys, the same 20 people, for you know, 14 days, possibly even 21 days at a time. And if you can't, I mean, if you have thin skin and yeah. uh, you can't take a joke, then you're going to have trouble. Yeah. You know? um, but yeah, so everyone really tries, and I think it, especially uh, nowadays, we've been able to, you know, really stay nice and lighthearted while staying safe out in the woods, and it's been great. You know, and, I, and I'm loving it right now. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's cheaper than a gym membership. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to... Feels brisk. At least, uh, at least I chose today to wear probably the gayest underwear I own. Here's your belt strap. Okay. Now you want it to ride low. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, I'm currently dressed like a frosted mini wheats version of a forest fire fighter, and uh, we're gonna go uh, dig some line. There's not a fire right now, but it is good practice. Line is basically a ditch that you surround the fire with and then it can't get over that. You're not trying to do the whole line by okay. yourself. Yeah. You're gonna come along and do this and then just a, a flat, 
It's pretty much like this, move a little bit, like that, move a little bit, like that. Cutters are the first one in, cut the line. And uh, then the swampers come, they clear everything out. And then the diggers come behind them and, and uh, do a fire line. They're about two minutes into it. Yeah? Can you keep doing this for how long? Uh, 16 hours sometimes. Oh my god. So, this is extraordinarily hard work. It's impossible to keep my eye on where I'm hitting and where I'm going. <laughs> And that's with no fire in front of me. In the oak. Okay. That's a bit. Uh, it's a bit laborious. That's about what, like a a fiftieth of your average. Uh, oh yeah, shift. at least that was probably oh six minutes. How much distance we cover? Yeah, hundred feet maybe. Seven hours would do 10,000 plus feet. 100 times that. We started getting it pretty good right before we quit. We yeah. were spaced out perfect. Yeah, I didn't have to get it. Uh, having fun? Not yeah. bad for a rookie, Tom. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We'd take you on the crew. Uh, that'd, that'd be short lived, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. Uh, I've been working in the woods all my life, but uh, started out logging. And it's like coming full circle for me. Yeah. I've, Cut the trees down, the big timber, and, and uh, set the chokers, hauled them out of the woods, and did a little bit of planting. And now I'm back thinning it out and, and uh, help prevent the wildfire. You want to use back here from here back on your saw. Never to the tip. Yeah, the closer you get to here when you're limbing, the more chance you have a kickback. Yeah, okay. And remember, you always want to wrap this thumb around yeah. the handlebar. Okay. Don't cut with it up there like that. You have no control with kickback. This will come right out of your hand. And you grab that chainsaw, <laughs> you, you mold onto it. It becomes yep. part of your body. One of the things that turned my stomach the most, the chainsaw cut. Oh. It cuts quick into the bone, and when it stops, those teeth pull everything yeah. out. And then just imagine doing that all day. The key to happiness out here is, is uh, Sharp chain. chain. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now we go. Good job. All right. Now, uh, now the fun part. I am sore and sweaty and ant bitten. Um, I got sawdust in my mouth. I got chips under my eyelids. Uh, I've got weird vibrationally numbed fingers from the chainsaw. Um, I feel very good about myself though, because I've done an honest day's work, helping the forest and keeping people from having their houses burned down is a pretty good way to spend your time. Wants to get you in decent shape. Firefighters around the world are universally acclaimed and considered heroes. Uh, forest firefighters, though, are kind of in a league to themselves. They basically go into one of the deadliest situations in nature, something that we've all been instinctually hardwired to avoid on sight or smell, like, no matter what, and get right up against the flames and then do one of the hardest jobs imaginable, which is digging a ditch. It's some of the hardest work, I think, exists.